This car is, quite possibly, the only car you'll ever need. According to the manufacturers, it's sporty, yet equally capable off-road. It's an upmarket brand, but prices start just shy of 30,000. It's compact, yet can seat seven. It's streamlined, yet offers a commanding view of the road. It's safe, but it's quick. I could go on. Meet the new Discovery Sport, which Land Rover reckons is the world's most versatile, compact SUV. Are they right? Well, I've come to Iceland to see if we should now discard all our family cars, sports cars and confusing crossovers and just buy one of these instead. And first impressions are promising because it seems they've got the Disco Sports interior just right. It's functional and it's made out of beautiful stuff. Not too showy, not too basic, just kind of plays it straight. You've got a USB charging port next to every single seat. So everyone can be super social in the car and sit and look at their tablets. And the ride was impressing me too. The Disco Sport's got a firmer ride than most SUVs of this sector, but I quite like a car to be a bit more planted on the road, but it's not compromising comfort. And if you were in the back, you'd have almost the same leg space as you would the flagship Range Rover, fact. Currently, prices for the Disco Sport start at around £32,000, but this will dip below £30,000 when a super frugal diesel arrives later in the year. Until then, you get the choice of only one engine, the 2.2-litre diesel carried over from the now-defunct Freelander. See, I've got no problem with this engine when it comes to poke. It's got just under 190 brake horsepower and 310 pounds-feet of torque. But what you leave wanting more of is better MPG and less noise. It is a bit of a vocal screamer, this diesel. And in a car like this, where they've really gone to town on trying to make it more refined, and it's just a bit annoying. People buy Land Rovers because they want to know they can go anywhere and do mad adventure things. They might not actually do it, but they like to know they can. So the Sport is equipped with Land Rover's idiot-proof off-road system. Terrain response is just such a simple way of letting you go anywhere without having too much off-road driving experience. You basically just press the button, look for the correct logo, so in this instance a snowflake and a wobbly lane, and I just drive it. What it does is it will throw torque to each individual drive shaft depending on where it loses grip. Although the Sport shares many design cues with the smaller but plusher Range Rover Evoque, it's certainly not as sharp looking, but that's missing the point. The turn on for this Disco Sport for me is not really the aesthetics, it's the packaging. It's a hell of a thing. Because although this car is 250 millimetres shorter than the £60,000 Range Rover Sport, somehow Land Rover has managed to shoehorn in seven seats. There's a hell of a blizzard blowing in, so I thought I'd pull over and show you this genius part of the Disco Sport, perhaps the trump card. Now, with the boot as is, you get a 479 litres of boot space. However, if I move these, you can adjust these middle row of seats up to 160 mil. With these forward, the boot then becomes 689 litres. And then, if I fold this middle row flat, so essentially turning it into a van, then, I've got 1,700 litres of boot space. Also, the occupants in these seats can choose to recline it just at the touch of a lever. But we haven't even talked about the back seats yet. Click that. Go and push the seats down. Click, click. And then you simply pull this lever all the way up and then there's your headrest. Sixth seat. Seven seats, they're bigger than they look. It was now beginning to get dark and I needed to get home. But little did I know what lay ahead. I've been told to drive that way. The only problem with that is that there's a river. A river that to me looked like a step too far for my disco. Land Rover have said it's no problem, although it's quite a steep drop. And I can't deny I'm a little bit on the nervous side because it's very cold. But hey, let's just see, shall we? Whoa. 
I wasn't expecting that. I'm cocking a leg here. I don't know if that's supposed to happen. Oh, sh Stone the crows, it's not coming in, is it? I'm driving across a river in Iceland. This is extremely adventurous. You'll be glad to know the Discovery Sport has got a 600 millimetre wading depth, which is 100 mil more than the Evoke, which means it can wade through rivers like this that have got huge chunks of ice floating around in them. I'm gassing out the other side. In spite of some very real concerns for my safety, I've made it. That's amazing. That's completely amazing. The point that remains through this car, through all of their products, is you can't fault Land Rover's DNA. It's built to do the harshest of activities. It's built to go where cars really shouldn't go, like rivers. It's not often that you can compare a Swiss Army knife, a very clever little thing with a plethora of attachments that does a multitude of things, to a car. This is a Swiss Army knife. It doesn't just do a few things quite well, it does a lot of things very well. In fact, it's probably all the car you'd ever need. Whoa!